The executive director of the International Wikimedia Foundation, Lila Tretikov, is fighting for the survivor of her biggest asset, the free online encyclopedia, Wikipedia. But with a lawsuit against the NSA and little resources, she's likely to be in for a long battle. Ayman Siksik met her today in Israel for a conversation on women in power and the men who sometimes stand in their way. We're here at the IDC, the Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya, where Wikimedia Israel is holding a conference on how Wikipedia, one of the largest sites in the world, has influenced education in Israel. And joining me now is the guest of honor, Laila Tretikov, Executive Director of Wikimedia Foundation. Laila, welcome to Israel and welcome to the news today. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. We're meeting at a very interesting time for Wikipedia right now. 14 years after it was launched, the internet has changed greatly. Some would say it changed from this utopian uh, space of where knowledge is free and everyone is sharing information to a uh, basis that's more based on commerce and money. The biggest sites in the world right now are motivated by money. What are some of the challenges for Wikipedia right now? Where does it go from here? That's a great question. You know, um, I, I would agree with you in some ways that, of course, um, you know, the world is motivated by money very largely, but the world also is motivated by learning and curiosity and finding a new things, uh, new ways to explore and experiment. We're explorers by nature, you know, humans are. Um, the next thing, you know, exploring space potentially. Um, so I, I think that that component is always, always relevant. So the search for knowledge is not going to stop. Uh, it's going to continue. And I think Wikipedia is going to be there in the next five to ten years. Our goal, of course, is to adapt to how people will learn. Because people are learning differently today than they were learning 10, 15 years ago, because the tools are different. And, you know, you're mentioning how people use the d internet differently. Facebook and Google are really good examples of how now people receive information on the news, on their news feeds. And these are huge corporations with unimaginable amounts of money. How can an NGO like Wikipedia compete? Our power is in every human being around the world because people are motivated by uh, their intrinsic motivators, by their desire to contribute, their desire to learn, and their desire to teach. And we have hundreds of thousands of contributors around the world who are participating without you know, us having to pay them. Um, if, you, uh, if you're a Google or Facebook, you have to pay uh, every, every single person that's, uh, that works for you. Um, and, um, and the motivation there is uh, is much more is much different than motivation around the world for Wikipedians. And I have to tell you, as a student, I used Wikipedia. Later on in the university, I used Wikipedia. Even now, as a reporter, I advise with Wikipedia often. Uh, will there be a day when we'll see ads on Wikipedia? Will the internet force that? Oh, I certainly hope. It will never happen. Um, I think that um, part of what Wikipedia is, Wikipedia's ethos, is that the, uh, there is no advertisement. It's so orthogonal to who we are. So it's definitely, uh, I, I see it as part of my purview to make sure that we don't ever need to go there. And you know, I want to take you to a slightly sensitive subject that happened last night on midnight. The NSA's uh, powers were limited by Congress for even temporarily. And on March, of course, Wikimedia filed a suit against the NSA. Can you tell us a little bit about why this is important for Wikimedia? Absolutely. And I'm glad you asked. Uh, you know, we believe that it's really important for every human being to have a voice. Um, the voices are all different, there's diversity, but it's really, really critical for people to be able to speak. Uh, to speak what they what they about what they know, uh, to learn about what they want to learn. Uh, in order to do that, their rights to do so need to be protected. Um, and just like with uh, protecting rights in print or protecting rights in physical life, we now need to think about protecting rights in digital in the digital world. And because technology is evolving so quickly, oftentimes legislature is just not catching up fast enough. And we see it as our part of our mission to make sure that people understand um, understand how their information is used and reused around the world. And uh, and we see our uh, as part of our mission to ensure that not they understand it and that the legislature reacts to it as well.
And speaking of uh, facing with big corporations like the NSA, uh, you were chosen as one of Forbes' most influential women last year in 2014. It seems to me, from what I've read up, like male autocrats around the world are not very happy. Russia last year said they want to create an alternative to Wikipedia that will show Russia in quote-unquote objectively. And we know that China blocks certain, if not many, pages on Wikipedia. The same goes for Iran. Do you still believe today that freedom of information is a possibility in today's world? You know, I'm an idealist, I suppose. I think that the world will end up there, absolutely. And, uh, you know, objectivity, let's, I, I love that word because objectivity is the combination of a lot of many, 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 many different points of view that are refined through, uh, through this um, multifaceted uh, kind of compression into something that's that's facts um, or mostly facts, which is what Wikipedia is. In the in the past, um, objective points of view were written by one, two, three people, uh, the historians or the governments, you know, and that's how we educated our children. The beauty of something like Wikipedia is fully democratized. Anybody, any human around the world can go in, and as long as they provide, you know valid information can go in and edit it. And that is true objectivity, which is means that anybody in the world, all of the world, is objectively creating this. And you know, we're still talking in a world today where women still make less than men. Is technology the answer? Is a high-tech world the answer for women to finally break through the glass ceiling? Oh, I wish that was that straightforward. Uh, you know, technology can make it better, but it can also sometimes make it worse. And in the tech world especially, is actually the problem is very, very pronounced. Because in the technology, women, uh, we see huge dropout rates of uh, women in tech institutions and then when they enter the work, uh, the workforce in, te in, in tech. So we definitely need to, uh, to work on that problem a lot. Um, so while technology democratizes things some, in, in some ways, it also can reinforce some of our social habits that exist today. So technology is no longer a man's game, you would say? It was never a man's game. Oh my God, going back to the, the, to the roots of, uh, of computer science. And finally, I just want to take you back. I want to hear a little bit about your personal story. You immigrated from Moscow to the United States at 16. Did the little girl, Lila Tretikov, ever imagine growing up in Moscow where free freedom of information is not a given? Did she ever think she will head the organization that its main value is freedom of information to everyone around the world? I never imagined it. But I was always led for, by curiosity. I was always not satisfied with, uh, with the status quo. And this is why I moved from Moscow. I, I felt like I could see my life 20 years down the line. And I thought it would have been a nice, comfortable life. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be hard. I wanted challenges. Uh, and I wanted to, um, to make impact. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Back to you, Lucy.